In my previous video on Juni, we used Juni to create a test for the customer repository. And in that, I told Juni to go ahead and test for validation constraints. And because I didn't have any on there, it went in and added them. And it, it did a decent job. I'll give it that. But it did not match the uh, database. So I typically like to have my constraints match the database constraints. And what we can do is we can provide it a, a follow-up prompt. So if I look at the migration scripts for Flyway, we can see that I have a create customers uh, table, and then the next script will add in the email property. The email and the name properties are allowed to be null, so I'm gonna ask Juni to update the JPA entity to match the database constraints. Also, I am using DTOs for the service layer uh, to the controllers, and I have a customer DTO that DTO should have corresponding validations against it. So what I can do is I come back over here to Juni. You can see at the bottom we have a follow-up task. So we can instruct Juni to go ahead and do a follow-up on this. So let me go ahead and write that prompt. So you can see here, I've added a prompt in saying to update the constraints of the customer JP entity to match the create or update table statements of the Flyway migration scripts. Also update the corresponding customer DTO POJO to have the same validation constraints as the customer entity. Now what I can do is provide this follow-up prompt to Juni, and it's going to understand the, the context of the previous commands with a reference to this new one. And I've seen JetBrains talk about that this can be a little expensive as far as the tokens used by the LLMs because it is doing additional work here. I, I do want to demonstrate the ability of it to go through and inspect. So we can see here it's going through inspecting the, the flyway migration scripts. It's probably going to do all of them because it wasn't very specific in the prompt. So it's going to go through that. So I paused the video while Juni was running, and we can go through the results here. And I was watching it run, and it ran into some problems at adding the size constraints to the customer DTO, and it ultimately uh, reverted them. It made a mistake there, so if I minimize the Juni window here, and let me minimize the test context that it ran, it made some changes here, but it didn't uh, complete the annotation. So I'm gonna give it another follow-up prompt to instruct it to do that. So I'm saying verify the customer DTO has the same validation constraints as the customer JPA entity. Ensure the tests are passing. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this is doing the work. Okay, Jenny completed the work and I'm going to minimize the test. So at the when it completely ran everything, it did go through and bring up the test dialog in IntelliJ, executed the test, verified that they were in fact passing. So that, that did get through it. And I, a couple things I want to point out here is it did do a build step, so Juni does have the ability to go ahead and compile the project and verify that there are no compile errors. Again, I ran the test. I'm not sure why it ran them twice here. Not, or no, it, uh, let's see here. Okay, so it did the controller splice test and also the repository test, so it ran two different tests against the customer entities and things that used it. And what was interesting, it seemed to, to struggle a little bit as far as finding, it was adding in the, let me minimize this, it was adding in the size constraints, which you expect it to, but it was missing the import. So it went through, saw that the size was missing. It didn't pick up that Jakarta in, import for size. So I kind of found that interesting. I haven't seen it do that in the past. It usually picks up imports like that pretty quickly. In this case, it, it struggled with that a little bit, but ultimately it did complete what I did, what I asked it for, and we can see it, it took a took three uh, follow-up prompts to get it to do exactly what I want, and I probably would have got better results if I modified the prompt a little bit. The art of writing prompts uh, really drives the results of what you're going to be seeing out of Juni as it does its work. So just to, to recap the workflow with Juni, what you're going to do is you're going to create an initial prompt. It's going to go through and try to execute what you asked it to do, and using follow-ups, 
you can direct Juni to make changes to what it changed. So very important when you're using AI coding tools like this to go through and inspect the work that it does because it doesn't always get it right, but you can prompt it and nudge it to the right direction where it will produce what you want to see built.